Hi. Hello. I'm a bit nervous, but let's do this. Um, hi. Yes, um, we are young. Um, thank you so much for having us here. It's literally a dream come true to be at Nicer Tuesdays, so we're like over the moon to be here. Um, it's probably best that we do introductions first, even though Matt did a really, really good job. Uh, but I'm Vicky Young, and this is Niels van der Donk, and together we are the 3D animation studio called Yonk, based in The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, so how did we get here? By bus? No, I'm joking. <laughs> how to do it? It's so silly. We're going to do so many silly things, so just be prepared for that. But how did we get here? How did we get to speak to all of you lovely people tonight and tell you a little bit about our story? Well, it started when me and Niels were in art school together. This is us looking a little bit younger and fresher back in those days. Um, I was studying fine art and Niels was studying graphic design. We fell in love, which is a bit of a soppy story. <laughs> but it happened, it's true, we're in love. Um, <laughs> we are, very convincing. Very convincing. Um, <laughs> we are in love. And uh, we graduated, we did the whole shebang, uh, we got jobs, you know, casual graduation life. Um, but we always knew we wanted to work together. Um, we wanted our own studio one day. Um, but the issue was is that we had these two very different disciplines. We had graphic design from Niels and fine arts from myself. Uh, but we wanted to find skills in both of these that we could use, but also learn something new and exciting. Uh, and we landed on 3D. So let's go and learn 3D, right? Um, no. <laughs> Because when you open a 3D program, it usually looks like this. There's a lot of buttons. It's gray. Why is it gray? It's so sad. But it's, it's just, there's a lot of stuff to see. And we wanted something that was way more fun and way more intuitive uh, that could just basically let us go into 3D straight away. Um, so we discovered something called VR Sculpting. Here's live discovery videos. It's definitely not us last week filming this. <laughs> Um, and basically, uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to spray out kind of virtual clay, almost like substance, um, and basically sculpt, yeah, in virtual reality. It says what it does on the tin. Um, <laughs> but what the best thing about this was is that we essentially could start making work really quickly, really intuitively, and just go make 3D work, right, and become a 3D studio. But, uh, but as all, in all studios, at some point, you need a name, right? So what happens <laughs> when you combine Victoria Young and Niels van der Dahl? So everything you saw uh, in that video was sculpted using VR, and it's kind of you know, the only thing that we use. We don't even know how to sculpt with traditional uh, sculpting. Uh, and we quickly figured out that the tool like, allows for a lot of mistakes. It allows for a lot of uh, like, imperfections. Uh, and so we started creating a lot of work, just uh, bashing out. Uh, and we quickly realized we could create our style really quickly, which is kind of like a representation of us as people. Like We just make for the sake of making. We don't overthink. We just get enthusiastic, we, start, we instantly want to start creating. Uh, and in a sense, you could call us playful problem solvers because we had the thing, the, the, the daunting 3D, uh, but we found like a more fun approach to, yeah, kind of a workaround. And that's kind of been like the red line throughout the, the young career um, because we also use this approach for a lot of other ways where we run into, yeah, sticky technical difficulties. 
So a good example of this uh, is our first ever job we did for It's Nice That. Coincidence. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> uh, the lovely team over here asked us to do the 2021 Next Generation campaign, uh, which was a lovely little 3D animation we wanted to make. Uh, so we started by basically creating this like plasticine normcore garden. And our idea that was something was going to fall into the garden and disrupt the peace of the garden like the next generation disrupts the creative scene, right? So we had this lovely garden, but we had our first problem, which was we weren't the best at animation. This is about as much as we could do at the time. <laughs> Sorry, it's nice. <laughs> Um, so we needed something that could kind of create a dynamic element within our work, something that can distract from our pretty shitty animation. Um, so we looked around and we didn't have to look too far because that same VR headset that we use every day to sculpt, uh, we actually figured out that we could attach a virtual camera onto that controller and create a handy cam. So great, we have a bit of dynamic movement, we don't have to do too much animation. But the second problem came around really quick because we made all these characters and we really needed them to like have some sort of emotion, like maybe speak even. Uh, but we realized that we actually sculpted them, except for our shovel, all with their mouths closed, so they can't speak. <laughs> um, and instead of trying to rip their mouths open, we decided that we would just embrace this and we'd just make them hum and moan. And it goes something like this. Apologies for nightmares tonight. I'm super glad we got away with that, actually. That's perfect. Uh, but what if like, these characters does need to, to speak? Uh, in comes Nike with their Nike Move Challenge. Uh, and essentially, the ask was, like, we have all these prompts, and there's going to be this video. All these kids are going to be dancing to them. So you have like an ice cream, a pigeon, g squader that came up with some great stuff. And can you make some cool animations? Like, yeah, super fun. Uh, but one of them was an octopus, and as we all know, that's kind of like animation's uh, animator's worst nightmare because they have eight legs, you know, and uh, we actually tried to sculpt it with six, but we didn't get away with it. Uh, on top of that, they were also, it would be cool if you could speak. And we're like, fuck, this is gonna be really hardcore, but really fun, like, let's try, let's, let, let's tackle this. Uh, and we instantly thought about our phones because you can do these memojis these days and it just tracks your whole face. It's super expressive and we thought, but that would be super handy for us. Can we not use this to apply to our own characters? Uh, and it turns out that you can. So this is me on the left side, being super expressive, uh, controlling our 3D character on the other side. And what's really great about this uh, is that it allows us to make really complex animations, like really, really quickly. Uh, and most importantly, it's way more fun, right? Because I'm just puppeteering in a sense. Um, so here he is, uh, chit-chatting away. <laughs> we were like super happy with it. This is what it looked like in the end. You might notice there's no sound because uh, they actually removed his voice in the end. Uh, but it didn't matter because we were super happy because we figured out something new. Uh, we really like this puppeteering, right? It's really fun. So can we not explore it more? Uh, and then we thought about our old Kinect. I don't know if people still remember the Kinect, but it was like kind of a failed piece of hardware for Microsoft, Microsoft for their Xbox. Uh, in fact, this is the first time they announced it, which is like one of my favorite YouTube clips of all time. As you can see, when I start making movements with my avatar, it instantly mimics me on screen. You ever wonder what the bottom of an avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what bang? Like, we were like, that's so cool, we have to use this. Uh, and uh, we uh, used it for uh, my old boss, uh, Lisa Enemis from Studio Dunbar. Uh, yeah, and it's super accurate and it's perfect. And, uh, I can't even tell which one is the real Lisa anymore, of course. Um, no, we want to do this, right? We want to we wanna crawl on the floor, and I want Vicky to scream at me, like, be more like a, like a goblin or, you know, something like that. It would be way more fun. And so we thought, is that not possible for us? Uh, and it turns out there is. <laughs> so this is me in a, in a very tight uh, suit. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, and it's, it's a Rococo suit, and what's really, really great about this type of technology is that it's becoming more widely available for like smaller studios like me and Vicky. Uh, like AI is also gonna be taking this over at some point. Uh, what's even better about it is that I can hold a banana and act like I'm a knight at the studio during uh, normal working hours. Or I could even become a little flower if I really wanted to. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is a daily, uh, yeah, daily occurrence for us. <laughs> yeah, silly stuff. Um, so what we realized about all of these processes is that even though we're using high tech, it's actually pretty analog. We're using our hands for VR sculpting or our bodies for puppeteering. And this is something that we've wanted to explore further, this kind of relationship between analog and digital. And uh, we decided to make some of our own tools to kind of like revisit this kind of analog. Um, so we started off by creating a poster for an event in uh, Berlin. Uh, we created some pretty fun like little logos that, you know, you, you understand, yeah, this kind of thing. They wrap it around the character. Um, and then we thought, why, not, why don't we go back to like crayon and pen and try and like wrap the whole sculpture in crayon and pen. So this is Niels making some little crayon doodles and we scan those in and we devised a tool that essentially allows us to wrap those squiggles across kind of a sculpture. And what you get is this kind of mix up between a weird like analog kind of drawn thing and then analog VR sculpting, but also digital, so kind of strange stuff. And then we thought about stop motion. I mean, that's kind of like the next step, right? Like analog animation. Can we recreate some of this using our virtual techniques or our digital techniques? Um, and so we got to work. And it was a lot of work because we had to sculpt every single frame of motion. Uh, this is a puff of uh, smoke that we uh, sculpted. And then we devised our own tool to cycle through that motion, basically allowing it to like change frame per second. We could do all sorts of stuff with it. And what's really nice about that is that we could blend it with our more traditional 3D animation and create a kind of, again, weird thing between analog and kind of, you know, normal 3D is like very strange. It's very <laughs> fun, but we're excited about these things. Yeah, so, so in essence, uh, at Young, we're constantly trying to develop ourselves. We're always trying out new things. We never sit still. Like we're always trying to evolve in a sense. And recently we thought, how can we represent that in an identity? We don't really have a, like a, we have a bit of a logo, but I mean, we don't, we're not so attached to it. So let's see if we can explore that and have that represent us, who we are as a studio. Uh, and then you start making a logo and then you're like, am I still gonna like this in like a year from now? Is it still gonna be able to, is it still me in, a, in like a, in a year? No, and then you're like, I will give this like maybe six months or something. This one I absolutely hate. I don't even know why. Like, ah, we have all these. We made all these logos, and then we figured, like, if it doesn't matter, like, we should. Is there not a way that we can make all these logos become one and create some kind of system that allows us to add new ones in there every time you think, like, this is us now. We're <laughs> we're at this this point in our life, you know. Uh, and then uh, so we started developing our own tool once again, uh, and we started sculpting all these logos at first, all these steps in between to kind of use the same stop motion technique that uh, Vicky just talked about and make one logo of all. And then you get something that looks like this and it's kind of more representative. It's still very much a work in process. It's just like we thought it would be fun to show these types of things. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting for us. Uh, and then we were also like a logo is not just an identity. We would need like a tie face because all the cool brands have that as well. Uh, we made like this, this type and then we were like, well again, how are we gonna make it uh, like just as variable, you know, as we are, <laughs> as young. So we're like, okay, let's do this. Make a 3D variable typeface tool again, <laughs> because we like to make things very difficult for ourselves. Uh, so this tool basically allows us to edit every single letter uh, according to our needs. So we can just, yeah, you can see it, uh, you can ske squeeze it, make it a bit thicker. Uh, and you can also animate between all these different states, essentially creating like an ever-changing typeface. And then we thought, okay, we have the logo, we have the typeface in process, and we make characters, right? So why not make a variable mascot? <laughs> so is it a plane? Is it a bell pepper? Is it a dog? Who knows? It could be anything, which is what we're really excited about. Um, so the reason we're showing you all of this silly stuff, all of the kind of work in progress, we're calling ourselves play for problem solvers is because we really truly believe that is the essence of Yonk. Uh, we have a lot of fun, as you can tell, uh, but we come up with playful solutions for all of our problems to make all of our wildest and weirdest ideas come true. 
Thank you so much.